Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at ticker symbol EL, Estee Lauder. We're gonna go ahead and see if the stock is worth $96. We're gonna go ahead and see what institutions and hedge funds are doing. Are they buying the dip or are they selling the ship? Uh, we're gonna do some advanced charting as well on Think or Swim. Let me see if my future self thinks my past self. It does not. So I have not charted this one before. Very excited. I love charting a new company. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in and click that uh, subscribe button. I'm going to go ahead and shrink my face here. Uh, I think a little bit more. All right. So this stock has been through a roller coaster. I mean, 2017, it was trading 77. Got all the way up to 371. Now back down to $95. Very interesting. The strength, it's with the bears at the moment. It's at a 31. That's very low. Uh, I don't, when's the last time this stock was at a 31 RSI? 2009. If you would have bought in 2009, you would have got it at 10 bucks. And it went to what, 390? What did it get to? Went to 370. 37X. Wow. Um, okay. Looking at our momentum, it looks like it was gonna go up, but uh it looks like the business and earnings said nope. Money flow again, like bottom of the barrel, but it it is angled up right here. And our relative momentum indicator, obviously, at the bottom of the ocean. I mean, that just kind of tracks. There's no strength, no momentum. So does this stock worth deserve to be worth 95 or should it be worth less? Because Wall Street thinks it should be worth less. <coughs> I do see an issue. So uh, their sales peaked at $17,740,000,000 million in 2022. Their trailing 12 months is at 15 billion 310 million. That is lower than 2023. So it looks like this company is on track for further decline, but we'll 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 do some digging and see how they're doing. Uh looking at our metrics here, they do have a bit of debt, but their quick ratio is over one, so that's a thumbs up. Uh forward PE is a 53. That means it's very expensive today. But if they continue tr on their trajectory with margins and revenue, it'll be about cut in half in terms of the price to earnings. So currently expensive, in the future it's cheap. So um, earnings past five years, slightly negative. Sales past five years, slightly positive. Overall, are they resilient? Maybe, kinda. Um, they are profitable. 70.66% gross margins. That is the perfume and cologne business. Put a scent in a bottle and pay 10 cents, sell it for five bucks. Um, obviously that's more than 70%, but you gotta account for shipping, you know, the store, the rent, someone's wage, etc. So uh yeah, I'm excited about this one. Uh, we'll do some advanced charting in a moment. I want to see what my projected stock price calculation comes out to because I'm very interested. They have 34 billion, 240 million in market cap. Sale, or I'm sorry, income, 641 million flat. And they do 15 billion, 310 million in sales or revenue for the year so far. A little concerned about this uh, debt we're going to see here, but let's, uh, let's go on. So Q1 this year, they did 3.9 billion. Q1 last year, they did 3.7 billion. So they're on an uptick. Yes, that's great. I wanna see, uh, let me see if they have Q2. Um, when did they report? I wanna see if they reported Q2, but it's not updated on the site. I'm not. Uh, no, they're just. 
a lot of price targets, whatever. So that was their last earnings were back in May. So uh, they do have earnings on the 19th, which uh, is very soon. So uh, I just want to see if they had Q2 data and if Finviz was not updated, but it looks like this is this is fine. So are they going to beat 3.6 billion in sales? They better. I hope I hope they come back stronger than 2023. So uh, that's great. Um, Net income, it's great. Uh, their gross profit is great compared to last year at the same time. Um, cost of goods sold, they spent less. That's interesting. They spent 1.1 billion to make 3.9 billion this year. Last year, they spent 1.159 billion to make 3.7 billion. So they spent an extra 52 million to make uh, about 200 million less. So it, what that translates to, and I'm sorry if I kind of made that all weird, but what that means is the brand is getting stickier. I don't know if they have an umbrella company where it's Estee Lauder and then they have Axe Body Spray. I don't know, whatever, girl, pref girl perfumes or people perf perfumes, whatever. Um, so their brand is getting stickier. That's a very, very, very good sign. Um, okay, so let's just, let's run, let's complete this. So they have 3.7 billion, 3 billion, 701 million in cash. Total debt, they have 8 billion, 972 million. Okay. Uh, and just really quick for total assets, 22.7, total liability, 16.1. Uh, I prefer to see at least a two to one ratio where assets dwarf liabilities two to one. So this would be a 16.1 in liabilities and ideally a 32.2 .2 in assets, but that's neither here nor there. Um, Jane Lauder, no red flag, no red flag. Tracy Thomas, did you get 14,000 shares stock options, Tracy? I only see 7,000, but whatever. And then Jennifer Hyman purchased $198,000 worth, which is actually pretty solid. Um, and then down here, Jane Lauder sell, sold 12.6 thousand, but stock options. So uh, no red flags at all, maybe more on the green flag side. Um, Going back up here to our shares outstanding. You guys can see everything, yeah. Okay, 22, 232,080,000. So this thing is stock price of 193. I just wanna make sure I didn't miss a zero anywhere. 34.2 billion, yes. 641 million, 15.3 billion, yep, yep. Cash, 3.7 billion, debt, yep. Okay, yep, 232 million. Uh, let's, I don't want to confuse myself down the road. Wrong way. Okay, perfect. So $193 stock price. I think this is absolutely incredible. Um, also I did kind of gloss over this. I didn't actually mention it. Shares outstanding are being naturally and organically accumulated. You can see in 2019, there was 361 million shares. 2023, there's 357. Looking at today, there's 232. So someone is eating this like cake or fruit or whatever is your favorite thing to eat. They're, they're doing it. <laughs> okay, so I'm actually really excited about this. Um, and I'm mostly excited because Q1, they did very well. Q2 on August 19th, if they can beat here, I think it's a long-term reversal opportunity. And it makes me excited. So in order for this to be correct and my thought process to be kind of going the right way. Institutions own 61%. This is old data. We should see on this tab I'm about to click, it should be higher than 61. Otherwise, we're probably in some trouble. 64. That's good. And as you can see, we're just right at almost all-time highs. So if we get a crazy beat for this next earnings and institutions start nibbling, 
Let's see what the big boys and girls are doing. Vanguard, Vanguard, Vanguard added 6.5%. LAL Family Partners, uh, no updates, no updates, no updates, no updates. Uh, William Lauder added 0.23%. Leonard Lauder, nothing. Richard Parsons, 0.2%. BlackRock decreased 7%. So the Lauders, I'm guessing they're the Estee Lauder, they're part of the family. They're actually not selling one single bit. And they have m -m 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 millions. And Richard, I don't know who Richard Parsons is. Maybe he's, I don't know, friend, family. He is not sold either. He actually added a little bit. So, um, I'm digging this. And then we've got our hedge funds, institutions down here. We also have ETFs, retirement funds, small firms, mom and pop shops. So, all right, you can come in here if you want. You see some good names like Red Tortoise LLC. That's pretty cool. Rakuten Securities. Anyway, uh, so that's all good. Let's take a look at some advanced charting because that is my bread and my butter. I want to see where the bottom is. Ooh, look what happened. Ooh. Oh, wow. There was a gap here that didn't get filled for five, six, seven years. And it finally came back down to fill it. So the gap here finally came and filled it here. Wow. So uh, we're going to do a couple things here. And I apologize in advance. But uh, this is really important. $7.94. Okay, I'll come back and make it more accurate. There's a few ways we can go here. We've got our bottom here we'll extend that to the right um, edit property 7.94 okay then we're gonna go again 7.94 okay i'll come back so that's our super bearish case then we have right here extend to the right uh, we'll come back and then we're going to go back here, 794. And we're going to go right here. And we're going to extend to the right. And we're going to do one more. 794. We'll come back and, and we're going to go. Okay, so basically what I just did, all the different um, trajectories this stock could have in terms of support, I have captured, and this is really important because um, when we have a flash crash or a quick market meltdown, this stock will retrace, and my best example, and I'm going to show you this, I'm just going to go off track just for one second. Look at what happened during the COVID crisis. The stock came down and tested the very bottom on Simon Property Group. Holy freaking goodness. I got goosebumps for weeks and it still gives me goosebumps. It came all the way down to the lowest level support since 2009. Came and touched it immediately. So this low was 42, immediately snapped back to 170. Incredible. So... Technical analysis, people call it uh, scribbles, um, you know, wh whatever you want to call it, uh, definitely helps in my opinion. So we've got our bottom support. So I think uh, I would want to see uh, some support at 86. So if earnings are bad, I think 86 is where we want to see uh, a bounce. However, don't be surprised if it goes to 57. I don't think it will, but you never know. Um, okay, so now what I want to do is look at Fibonacci arcs and see how well we can uh, track the level of confidence that the candles react with this pattern because if it tracks very well, high level of confidence looks good. We can do the same thing on the way down and it can give us uh, some a level of comfort 
uh, for a potential bottom. So we have a low here of 137.01. I'll have to come back and re-edit and then 374.20. Okay, I have to come back. So this was 137.01. One thirty seven point oh one and the high was three seventy four twenty. Okay. How well are these candles respecting? Pretty well actually. So you get your test here, test here, resistance test here, almost perfect resistance test, support. This next candle test this middle ring. Resistance, perfect support, perfect support, perfect resistance right there. Re great resistance falls through. Tests for the resistance, perfect support here. Falls up, comes through. Perfect support, almost perfect resistance falls through. So, not the my mouse, not the cleanest that we've seen. If you see my other videos, but it gives us a good level of confidence that if we go down from this three seventy four to this low here potentially we could find our bottom so 374.20 perfect right there okay so our low could be here or even here this one looks really clean this looks really clean at 57.59 though i don't know let's see how it looks for um August, if we hit our low in August. Now I'm in September. Okay. All right, so how well do the candles, and that's assuming that Estee Lauder will bottom at 86. So let's, let's just change the color of this so we don't get confused on what we're looking at. Let's make it purple. All right. Oh, oh gosh. Perfect support, perfect support, perfect support, perfect resistance, perfect resistance. Almost test resistance, perfect resistance. Falls through up. Perfect resistance. Great support, great support, perfect resistance, great resistance. Great resistance test. Falls through, test the inner ring, great support here. Great support, comes up. Great support right here. Great resistance, great resistance. Come on, reset. Okay. So, Estee Lauder bottoming at 86. Let's talk about it. I think it's possible. Um, I think what we could see, a couple things here. If they beat on this next earnings and institutions and hedge funds and firms love it, we're going to see institutional ownership go up. And it's further going to prove our case here that the natural and organic accumulation is extremely under, under aware. Like 2023, there was 357 million shares. 2024, a whole year not even a full year later 125 million shares have been gobbled up the shares outstanding are going down drastically here they're not adding to the supply so this is absolutely fantastic i think the company could really pull it off here um the lauders that lauder family that we saw None of them sold. They all have extreme confidence. So I don't know what to say other than I'm compelled by this one. I really, really, really like this one. And I just want to see what type of companies they have under their umbrella. And I want to look at the website quality as well. Dr. Jart. What? I've never heard of that name before, but Le Labo. Okay, so here's their brands. They have Mac. That's good. Let's view all their brands. Do they have Axe? I was just guessing if they had Axe. I don't know if they have Axe, but that'd be kind of funny if they did. 
Aaron, Aramis, Aveda, and I'm probably saying all these wrong, so feel free to make, make fun of me inside of your head. Clinique, Bumble and Bumble, Bobby Brown, Darfin, Dr. Jart, why is, uh, Estee Lauder, Joe Malone, not related to Post Malone, Lab Series, Mac, Lilabo, Origins, definitely popular, The Ordinary, very popular, Tom Ford Beauty, very, very popular brands. And you know what? A lot of these sell inside of Sephora, Ulta. Wow. I really dig this. I, I this these are just beauty products essentially. I mean, you got your load. I mean, possibly even candles. Face cleansers. I mean, this is uh this is a. Pretty good company, in my opinion. I don't know if they do candles. I'm pretty over it. Um, yeah, I I am probably gonna bite the bullet on this one. So you'll when I do purchase stocks that I review, I do post in my uh, YouTube community area. So if you're a subscriber, you'll see it. Just go to my community page. I post there when I make trades. Um, this seems like a low risk, medium reward here. I could add. A little bite at 95 if it falls to 86 add a little bite at 86 um and we know you know what looking looking into the future future us i see a potential cup and handle we have the left side of our cup with the right side building and you're probably like dude you're nuts why are you anticipating that i'm not anticipating it i'm just noticing if you've seen my other videos where we go back in time, whether we look at Tesla, Apple, NVIDIA, um, AMR, those are strong patterns on larger time frame charts. So the monthly chart, look what we see here, increased volume. This is more than a year's worth of increased volume. Yes, a bit more reds than greens, but still the greens are hanging in there. We could be seeing a bottom, a rounding bottom taking place here. And what happens? A reversal back to 380, 370, whatever. Um, now we don't want to bet the whole farm on that, but I think that's a that's a fair assumption, honestly. That's a fair opinion. Um, it's not gonna happen tomorrow or 2024, maybe not 2025. These patterns take a long time, like it's taken one, two, almost three years to play out the downside, not even considering how long it's going to take to make the rounding bottom and then potential upward move. So that's very, very exciting. I didn't realize that on this chart either. So that's that's freaking fantastic, honestly. Uh, I like this one. I'm playing offense. I will probably be buying... Um, a small amount, maybe five, 10 bucks over the next couple weeks. You'll see me post about it. Um, again, levels we want to watch. 86 is what I have for the low. Um, if we get a flash crash scenario, I mean, we're going through a recession right now. Um, Friday was like the worst day since March, 2020 when COVID happened. So who knows anything could happen, but I'm looking for 86. Uh, the next level to watch is 59 and would I be upset if I owned this? Would I be upset if they went down? Yes. But if they continue, if they beat on this next quarter, they're making multiple billions. They're making multiple billions a quarter. Let's just go down here. I don't want to miss. They're making 3.9 billion, almost $4 billion, two quarters in a row. That's pretty freaking insane. None of the lotters are selling. 70% gross margins. Where are you going to find that profitable? They do offer a dividend. So part of my calculation does not account that they're giving away cash to shareholders. It's only 2.7%, but still. Um, I dig this one. I really, really dig this one. So if you don't want the volatility of owning one single stock, you could also consider uh, owning the S&P 500. S&P 500 does have exposure to Estee Lauder. 
S, uh, not Estee Lauder. Uh, SP 500 is up 12% year to date. Estee Lauder is down 34%, meaning this is on sale. This is a strong company, strong brand. I like it a lot. I think I'm a buyer in the coming weeks. Actually, by the time you watch this, I would have already bought. So my future self is saying congrats on that purchase. If it goes down 59 and the company is still executing, you know what to do. This is me to me. You need to figure out your own risk tolerance. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing, leave a comment, and have a fantastic day.